Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz, and as you can probably tell, I'm a bit under weather at the moment. I've got a bit of a virus, and it has caused my voice to uh, shut down a bit. But I will continue for great justice. And today we're looking at the Dorville mapping competition, first phase, from planetphilip.com. Now in this uh, competition, uh, entrants had to choose a locked door in Half-Life 2 or its add-on episodes and then build a map around what was possibly behind that door. It was quite an interesting concept and the mappers had around 10 days or so to create a map for it, two weeks or something. So the first one here is called Above the Canals. I'm going to jump into it right now. And uh, this map, along with the last one in the pack by uh, WizardX, is probably the best example of the theme for me. Um, all the other maps didn't really give me the sense that this is somewhere in the Half-Life 2 game that we just hadn't been able to explore. Uh, this map and the one by WizardX really kind of cement themselves in the Half-Life 2 world by literally ripping parts of Half-Life 2 maps out and just editing them to add different paths. So I'm sure you all remember this area from Half-Life 2 in the canal section. And this f this first part is practically brush for brush the uh, the same map that you played through in Valve's game. We're just going to journey up here, and uh, even this puzzle is exactly the same as the Valve version. I just had the urge to check if there's anything changed up here. There's always a possibility of some easter eggs and things like that. Uh, as it turns out, it's, it's exactly the same as the Valve version, so perhaps a bit of a missed opportunity there. Let's go down and collect those goodies. Now I did try and use the airboat but it's it's actually unusable in this version so that's probably a good idea otherwise I would have, would have gone flying off down the river and uh, just ignored the map completely. <laughs> Okay, so now we're getting into the parts that are new. And uh, this map had a few issues that I disliked. Um, we're, we're getting to them now, so I can talk about them a bit more in a moment. But um, I had a couple of annoying kind of... It felt like the author was just trying to extend the playtime of the map artificially. And uh, whether that's intentional or not, I don't know, but it ended up being quite annoying when there's fairly obvious ways you could have gone around making shorter ways to complete things. But we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. So in Half-Life 2 we couldn't break through that window so this is all new now. It's all getting into what the whole mapping competition is about. Now, as far as adding areas onto existing Half-Life 2 environments goes, this is probably one of the best examples I saw. It still feels completely in tune with the rest of the map. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of the other maps really didn't make me feel like I was in an area that was in Half-Life 2. So congrats for that. I believe the author of this map is called Mr. Walrus. I, I don't know his real life name. But uh, it's, it's a fairly solid entry. Again, there's just a couple of issues I didn't like about it. The other thing I noticed was that uh, the map didn't run too well. I'm wondering if there's a couple of optimization issues there, or whether my PC was just playing up, but the frame rate was around 30 all the time. It's a bit low. So this uh, lambda symbol here kind of confused me a bit. I was trying to work out how to get onto the, you know, the, the roof of the structure. It turns out there's either a clip brush there or something that 
I couldn't break past. I didn't didn't actually think to turn around and look at the inside area there where the uh, energy packs were. I worked it out in the end. But it's still very fiddly to pick them up once you work out where they are. So I really like the way that the, the authors reused the environment here for a new type of gameplay. Just dispose of these annoying hit crabs. Now we're kind of getting into the area where it feels a little bit more ropey now from here on onwards. Uh, the first thing I noticed was these, these tree models here. They were obviously never designed to be viewed up close. You're just meant to like zoom past them in the speedboat. So you can tell they look really dodgy like this. Uh, it's a shame the author didn't change them out for some better tree models. There are plenty of them in Half-Life 2. And also there's some very strange like clipping going on in this area. Like You can't walk through these trees. There's just an artificial clip brush. There's a lot of strange clipping around this area which stops you from a uh, getting through areas. So here's the next puzzle here, we need to find some uh, batteries to open this door. Again you can see the tree models look quite bad. So we find the first battery here, that's great. And now you may remember, if you have keen vision, that the last battery is actually way back in that little shack with the uh, lambda symbol. So I spent a little bit of time looking around here for it, uh, to no avail of course. Now, this is the problem I had with it, you had to run all the way back down that green slope that we came up with the headcrabs just to grab this battery and then walk all the way back with the battery. As you know you cannot run while you're holding items in your hands so it literally is a walk back which is a shame because if you look down there there's a great this is a great way you could have just jumped over this uh, lorry here walked back up to that area across there and then just let a ladder down or something and created a shortcut back to that area which would, would have cut the travel time down fairly immensely it would have felt a lot better to the player as well kind of you know finding a shortcut in the environment like that. So here's the battery. And like if you'd just put a ladder here or something which is only activatable from the top to you know bring it down and go back up that way. That would have been much better I think. But as it stands you have to walk all the way back with this battery. It's just kind of uh, it's just too far to go. It's just annoying. Which is a bit of a shame. Maybe it would have been nice to go back down into the canal to find the second battery. To find the, the last battery, sorry. Use that environment a little bit more. But hey, we're there now. Let's just carry on, shall we? So this part I really like. You'll notice this guy here. He's got the supply crate. This is no time to be wandering around. If you remember correctly, in the uh, canal section where you're in the speedboat, this exact bridge is where this man drops supplies down in the original Half-Life 2 game. So it's a really nice touch that you can grab that supply crate a completely different way in this version. I really like that. Now you can see off in the distance there is a combine stronghold. We will get to that in a minute. Now this next part I found a little bit confusing as well. Um, you find the uh, resistance kind of outpost. <laughs> but there's no real kind of sequence here. You just kind of find a bunch of guys sitting around and there's no kind of prompt or a conversation or anything like that. It doesn't really kind of... it's not really obvious what you're meant to do once you get here. I almost thought this was the end of the map. I, th I was expecting it to fade to black any minute now because 
there just didn't seem to be any kind of continuation. So I just started using all the doors and eventually one of them opened and we carried on. You can tell there like it made a locked sound and then it unlocked so I'm, I'm not quite sure what's happening there but it just felt a little bit wrong. There should have been some kind of conversation or text saying you know these guys will help you go and take out the combine base or something to that effect. And here we are in the uh, scumbag Gordon Freeman section. So you have a hazard suit and you notice the, all the deadly radiation everywhere. And you tell all your friends to walk through here without any protection whatsoever. <laughs> it made me chuckle a bit. I hope none of these people were planning on having children. But again, it's, it's a nice reuse of the uh, canals part of the map. Gordon Freeman. That's my name. So this this next part, this combat part, um, it kind of suffers from a problem of using a lot of hit scan enemies with little to no cover, and they all kind of just all the combine enemies here just kind of pile up in one area, and uh, there seems to be some kind of AI strangeness going on with your teammates here as well. They don't seem to follow you that far. In fact, they seem to stay all the way back here. It's a bit strange. Civil protection. If you notice here, there's just a ton of combine. And uh, unless you stay all the way back here behind this truck, you don't really have any cover whatsoever. thing I moan about a lot when you fight combined in some maps they give you little to no cover when uh, you're fighting essentially a bunch of hit scan enemies. Uh, what I mean by hit scan is that when they shoot the bullets travel instantaneously there's no way for you to dodge them unless you've got cover. And once you get closer to them here it just turns into a bit of a duck shoot. <laughs> So here's where I realised that uh, we have to turn off the force field and I noticed the uh, combined energy device here. It doesn't quite seem to be triggered up properly though. We use this button here and the force field turns off but you can't actually do anything with this combined ball which really confused me because if you remember in Half-Life 2 you have to knock the balls out with the uh, gravity gun. But here the, the force field turns off but the ball is still in the receptacle. It's another one of my pet peeves with Half-Life maps is that they uh, a lot of them break convention with what Valve teaches you during the campaign. If you're going to change the rules about how some, something like that works in the Half-Life world, then uh, you need to communicate that to the player. Even as even if it's something as simple as changing the colour of the force field or changing the colour of the combine ball inside. There's a couple more instances of things like this in this pack as well, which I'll, I'll mention when we get there. Now this, this gets kind of ridiculous here. Um, this must be the most reinforced armor-heavy helicopter I've ever seen, because it literally takes about 50 rockets to take down. Maybe 50 is a bit of an exaggeration, more, maybe more like 30, but it is some insane amount of rockets. So uh, we're not going to watch the whole thing here, we're just going to uh, skip to the end, but uh, trust me when I say you'll be here for a while. <laughs> okay, so here we are a couple of minutes later, and the helicopter's finally about to go down. And that is the end. So I 
the plus plus points with this map where I really like the sense of place it gave you in the Half-Life 2 world again this is something most of the other maps in this pack were missing so I really enjoyed that and I really enjoyed the way it kind of interwove the new path through the map with the old path through the Valve uh, version of the map so that was really well done uh, minus sides were um, the really annoying backtracking and uh, carrying the battery for ages it was just too long and uh, performance issues and uh, some of the uh, kind of orientating of the player wasn't very great. I was wondering, left wondering what to do in a lot of areas. But uh, overall, very solid map. Enjoyed it. So let's go on to the next one. The next one is called Amplification by Mega. Yes, it's another Mega map which we get to enjoy. Let's do it. Okay, so, so you'll notice straight away that the map just kind of starts, there's no real kind of entry into the map from a location we recognise from the Valve maps. Which is a real shame, I was just kind of wondering where the hell this was meant to be in the Half-Life 2 uh, campaign. But uh, with that aside, it's a very nice looking map, with some nice combat scenarios in it. This, this first one, the only issue I've got with it is that you're kind of forced to hang back behind cover and you eventually run out of ammo for your pistol if you do this. As you notice, I've only got three bullets now. There's absolutely no ammo unless you run and pick some up from the uh, Combine Metro Cops, which is what I eventually had to do. If there was just like one pack of ammo as you came through the door or something, I think it would have been a lot better. Yeah, as you can see, it's got that it's got that very typical kind of Mega look to the map. I can almost recognise this style without being told it's a Mega map these days. <laughs> Just very, very a lot of attention to detail. Some great lighting. Mega's lighting almost reminds me of Quake style lighting in a way. It's a kind of a strange observation, but uh, there you go. It's hard to describe. Have some fun with these guys, grenade their asses. <laughs> Yabba my icing indeed. I love that. Um uh some video I saw on YouTube, uh the Yabba my icing thing. We've got Father Gregory talking to a zombie and all he's saying is Yabba my icing and I have a conversation that's absolutely hilarious. I'll have to uh, find a link for you guys to that video. Just, oh, I don't know, it just really tickles me. <laughs> so, more repelling guys. Perhaps a little overused in this area, but uh, there's not, not really many other ways you can get into this area, I suppose. <laughs> I like the way Mega uses the uh, the uh, wires to guide the player back when you hit that button because it's not you can't really see what it does from where you are when you activate the uh, control panel. So you just kind of there's a great visual cue with the wires to just follow them back and find the open door. So I like that. You always want to have something which shows the player where to go if. Uh, what the button does isn't entirely obvious from where the the activation of it is. I really like this area, it's nice and vertical. A lot, a lot of the maps in this pack felt very flat, but this one uh, has got a nice bit of depth to it in some areas. We're just going to snipe some headcrabs here. 
And again, you just got that fantastic meager attention to detail in this area. Just loads of decals and overlays and kind of, you know, junk prop models around just to really give it that lived in, destroyed feel. It's very nicely done. You'll notice here again, uh, you hit the button, but you can't really see what it does, but you just kind of follow the wires back to the top there, and uh, it's just enough to give the player a hint that that's where they have to go. I maybe would have perhaps made it a little bit more obvious, like perhaps the light turning on at the top there. So that, that button actually opens a door. Unfortunately, I didn't show you guys in this video where the door is before I hit that button, but there is actually a door that opens. You just don't see it in this video. So th this part took me a while to figure out that you actually had to use these crates to uh, navigate around. But uh, I worked it out eventually. <laughs> So again, we've got another battery puzzle. What is it with the battery puzzle, man? <laughs> I suppose it's a nice example of one of those kind of find X of Y to proceed kind of puzzles. But again, it'd be nice to just be a little bit more creative. We've seen enough of these battery puzzles. Let's Let's use something else in the future, shall we? Although it is kind of easy to understand to the player. Batteries power these things and yeah, I suppose it makes sense. It's just I've seen it so many times now. Let's let's use something else in the future. I don't know what, but you know, think think of something. Come on guys. <laughs> So there's the other battery there. It's a shame the other battery wasn't down on the floor somewhere. Um, Forced you to explore around a little bit more. But uh, as it is, it works just fine. And now uh, this this next part I really like. So you you come in here and you see the vent up there, and uh, it clicks that you have to use one of those crates from before to uh, jump up there. So I really like that you have to come back and use a puzzle solving element yet again in a different puzzle. Reminds me of Portal in a way. I'm sure there, there's a little bit of companion cube uh, loving going on here. <laughs> so we shall continue. I really like the kind of blue lighting in these vents. It works great with the uh, environment map on the uh, duct panels there. Looks really nice. Gonna have to steal that for my maps I think. <laughs> I really like this room. With all the glass everywhere that you can break, it really gives it that kind of action movie feel. I really wish there were more maps where you're just kind of running around and everything was being destroyed around you as you were fighting. It reminds me a lot of kind of Max, the Max Payne games in a way. And uh, kind of old John Woo action movies. I think there's a lot of potential for doing more stuff like this in uh, Half-Life maps. I think the uh, environment destruction isn't used as well as it could be in a lot of maps. Although, to be fair, it's never really been used that much in Half-Life during combat. But uh, it's not to say that people can start. The engine is certainly capable of such things. I'm going to recommend a movie to you now. If you haven't seen it, it's a really old John Woo movie from when he was still in Japan. It's called uh, Hard Boiled. If you haven't seen it, it's an absolutely brilliant action movie. Be warned, it is in Japanese and dub you can watch it in Japanese or in dubbed English. Uh, it's up to you which you prefer, but it's got some absolutely fantastic, iconic action scenes in it that really stand the test of time. They're brilliant to watch even today. Uh, the warehouse action scene and the hospital action scene at the end of the film are very notable. There's just utter destruction absolutely everywhere. But anyway, <laughs> back to the game. 
So again here we've got the wires showing where to go after you hit the button. And incidentally I really like it when you can kind of spy on combine. Well, not just combine but any units from uh, hidden places like up there. I do like it when authors let you do that. So this area I kind of like um, because the solution isn't readily apparent. You just have to kind of pay attention to the environment and look for things. And, uh, I noticed here that you can actually jump across onto the top of this uh, console there and get up that way. I think that while half life's very good at describing what you have to do in the environment, it's always nice to figure some things out for yourself like that. So yeah, overall, um, it's a shame the map didn't tie into the Half-Life universe better than it did. It would have been great to have a better sense of place within the Half-Life 2 campaign. As of, that's, that's what this competition was meant to be about after all, but, uh, but hey, we got a good map out of it either way. Uh, some very nice puzzles, good combat, and uh, it's that readily apparent Amiga style which I enjoy so much. So that was the first two maps guys, I'm going to split up these uh, videos into three parts, I'm going to do two maps in each part just to keep the length down a bit, I'm sure no one's got about an hour to spend watching a single video, so uh, I will see you on the next part, uh, see you next time guys.